Welcome to Celestial Chronicles, where we explore the depths of scripture to uncover the truths hidden within. Today, we're venturing into the book of Revelation to unravel the mystery of the 144,000. Who are these individuals, and what is their role in God's divine plan? Stay with us as we seek answers and gain a deeper understanding of these prophetic figures. Let's dive into the scriptures together. The book of Revelation mentions a distinct assembly, numbering 144,000, in three separate passages. In Revelation 7 verse 4, it is revealed that 144,000 from every tribe of Israel's offspring were sealed. This contingent is comprised of 12,000 individuals from each tribe, with the notable absence of the tribe of Dan, a detail that remains speculative. Revelation 14 verse 1 depicts the 144,000 alongside the Lamb atop Mount Zion, distinguished by having God's name inscribed on their foreheads. A further mention in verse 3 highlights this group's unique privilege of singing a celestial anthem before God, a song exclusive to the 144,000 redeemed from the earth. To comprehend the identity of these individuals, several fundamental inquiries must be addressed. When are the 144,000 sealed? The sealing of the 144,000 is a significant event described in the book of Revelation, occurring after a series of catastrophic events and before divine retribution. The narrative unfolds as follows. The 144,000 are introduced after the opening of six seals, each unleashing calamities upon the world, symbolized by four horsemen representing deception, conflict, scarcity, and death, followed by the martyrdom of believers and ominous celestial signs. These harrowing events, resulting from human misgovernance and diabolical schemes to annihilate humanity, align with Jesus' forewarnings in his Olivet Discourse. He prophesied an unprecedented period of distress, the Great Tribulation, so severe that if not abbreviated, no life would endure, but for the chosen's sake, it will be curtailed, Matthew 24 verses 21 to 22. Subsequent to this tribulation, instigated by Satan and errant humanity, comes the wrath of the Lamb and the great day of his wrath, Revelation 6 verses 16 to 17, signifying God's impending judgment. The 144,000 are marked with God's seal following the tribulation but before his wrath unfolds. Revelation 7 verses 1 to 3 describes four angels, poised to execute God's chastisement, instructed to withhold until the 144,000 are secured. This context indicates that the 144,000 comprise survivors of the Great Tribulation, distinct from the saints of bygone eras. What is the spiritual state of the 144,000? The 144,000 in the book of Revelation are depicted as individuals who have remained steadfast in their devotion to God. They are designated as servants of our God, Revelation 7 verse 3, described as those who have not been corrupted, symbolically referred to as virgins, indicating their spiritual purity. These individuals are characterized by their unwavering commitment to follow the Lamb wherever He leads. They are distinguished as having been purchased from humanity, representing the initial harvest offered to God and the Lamb, Revelation 14 verse 4. Revelation further characterizes the faithful as those who adhere to God's commandments, Revelation 12 verse 17, Revelation 14 verse 12. The concluding passage of the book pronounces a blessing on those who practice His commandments, granting them access to the tree of life and entry through the gates into the city, Revelation 22 verse 14. This implies a contrast with contemporary claims of Christianity, where complete obedience to all of God's commandments is not universally observed. For deeper exploration, one might consider examining topics such as the continuity of the Ten Commandments in the New Testament and the historical shift of the Sabbath to Sunday. Are church members today included in the 144,000? The question of whether contemporary church members are part of the 144,000 is a topic of debate among various religious groups. The Bible provides a framework for understanding the sealing of God's servants in contrast to the sealing of the 144,000. Revelation 7 verse 3 highlights that the earth should not be harmed until the 144,000 servants of God have been sealed on their foreheads. This seal serves as a metaphor for securing something, like a letter or a book, and also as a mark of authenticity or approval. Similarly, Ezekiel 9 verse 4 describes God instructing Ezekiel to mark the foreheads of those lamenting the city's sins, signifying their identification with God, whether literal or symbolic. In the New Testament, the concept of being marked by God continues, exemplified by Jesus, whom God the Father has set his seal upon, John 6 verse 27. This suggests a divine endorsement or selection for a special purpose. While some churches claim their members are included in the 144,000, the Bible's text suggests a specific timing and criteria for this sealing. 
which is distinct from general Christian identification or membership, the 144,000 are sealed after certain prophetic events, indicating a unique group that survives the Great Tribulation. 144,000 chosen and sealed during the Great Tribulation will be people who, during the Tribulation, repent of their sins and dedicate their lives to God through faith and obedience in order to be sealed for salvation. Also note that the vision of the 144,000 singing before God's throne in Revelation 14 verses 1-3 to occurs after these people have come through the Great Tribulation preceding Christ's return and after they have been sealed and changed into spirit. It is not a vision of people currently in heaven as some mistakenly suppose. Is salvation limited to only the 144,000? Revelation 7 identifies the 144,000 as being 12,000 from each tribe of Israel with the exception of the tribe of Dan. Two significant points to note here include the fact that the descendants of the ancient nation of Israel are still important to God and that salvation is not limited to this group. In addition to the 144,000, another innumerable multitude will likewise stand before God in white robes, Revelation 7 verses 9 and 13, symbolizing righteous living, Revelation 3 verses 4 to 5. This great multitude will include people from all nations, tribes, peoples, and tongues, languages, Revelation 7 verse 9. As they stand before the Lamb, Christ, a question is asked about who these people are and where they came from. The answer is, these are the ones who come out of the Great Tribulation, and washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb, verse 14. Because of their response to God, they will serve before the throne of God, verse 15. What is going to be the cause of so many people turning to God during the tribulation? The Bible reveals that two representatives of God, called the two witnesses, will prophesy on God's behalf for three and a half years, Revelation 11 verse 3. During all the turmoil and difficult circumstances that will accompany the tribulation, the ministry of these servants of God will bring about the addition of many sons and daughters to God's eternal family. These people will come from both the 144,000 and the innumerable multitude. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the book of Revelation and the mystery of the 144,000. As we've seen, these figures hold a significant place in the prophetic narrative. What are your thoughts on the 144,000? Do you see them as literal individuals or symbolic representations? How does this understanding shape your view of the end times? Share your insights in the comments below. Remember to subscribe to Celestial Chronicles for more discussions that illuminate the scriptures. Until next time, keep seeking the truth and let it guide you.